Hello, my name is Brian Kyle and welcome to my studio. Today we'll be using an 8x10 view camera uh, to make portraits. Instead of standard photographic film, we're going to use black and white photo paper uh, in its place and we'll make paper negatives, which are a really nice way to test the view camera. Um, in addition, uh, we'll just quickly talk about uh, standard uh, view camera operation. Just a really quick intro today, maybe something more in depth uh, later in the series. What we have here is Monorail Studio View Camera. Uh, it's called a monorail because there is just one rail that runs at the bottom here. Um, and some basic anatomy for the view camera is what we call the front part here, the front standard. That holds the lens board and the lens. On the back we have the rear standard, which holds the ground glass, um, which also is where film will go uh, when we're ready to take a picture. The rear standard and the front standard uh, hold the bellows, uh, which keeps it dark in between those two. And uh, the front and the rear standards also offer all the movements that this camera has to offer. Um, I'm not going to go in depth on all of them, but I would like to just show you that if we loosen the adjustments, we can make the front or rear standard either rise and fall. Um, we have the ability for it to swing and tilt. Swing I'm not going to necessarily show you. This is swing of the rear standard, just so you can see it. Um, we have shift, which uh, shifts the standards left and right. And then the standards uh, move on the monorail to aid in focusing. So close stuff uh, requires a lot of bellows extension. And to focus a lens of infinity, those standards might be pretty close together or with a wide angle lens, something like that. Um, Additionally, it's important to know that the camera is actually very simple. Um, I mentioned it being basically a darkened box. If you can see in there, notice that there are no other things. It's just pleated bellows that keep it dark, a lens, and ground glass at the rear, which is just basically frosted glass that a lens is able to project an image onto. Okay, let's talk about how we get film into our camera. What we have here is an eight by 10 film holder. Uh, this film holder can hold two sheets of photographic film and it holds those sheets in complete darkness till we're ready to take an image. Uh, when we are ready to take a picture, we slide this in front of the ground glass uh, so it's facing the inside of the camera. Uh, when we're ready to take the image, we lift the dark slide and our film is uh, able to be exposed by light. When we're done taking the picture, we push the dark slide back down. And if we'd like to take a second image, the film holder has a separate sheet of film that's available on the back side. Um, let's talk about how to load these holders. To load photographic film, we need to be in the dark. Notice this is pitch dark. Luckily though, for our demo, we're not loading actual photographic film. So, we can turn those lights back on. All right, if you remember, we're gonna be using black and white photo paper. Photo paper uh, for the black and white process is an orthochromatic film, which means it's not sensitive to certain wavelengths of red and orange light. So, standard darkroom lighting is perfectly okay to use when you're loading uh, black and white photo paper instead of film inside your film holder. All right, so let's turn red lights on. Okay, now that we're in safe lights, uh, let me show you how to load our standard black and white photo paper. Notice that one side is shiny and the other side is not. We need to be able to load the paper so the shiny side is uh, facing up. Let's talk about how these holders open. Uh, dark slide comes up. 
We want to make sure that if we need to, the dark slide's flipped around so the white label is out and the little bumps here are sticking out. This lets us know that the, this side of the film is unshot. At the bottom, this swings open. Once that is swung open, we can take our paper, shiny side up. We can feed it under these two little fingers that stick out here. We can slide it all the way up, flip the bottom door closed, push the dark slide down, and now that paper is light tight in there and we can turn our lights on. Okay, now that we've focused, we're ready to take a picture of our lovely model here. Once we're ready to go, we pull the film or the ground glass backwards. We take our film holder, we put it in through the top until it fits snugly at the bottom. Lower the spring against it. We lift our dark slide all the way up. We turn it around so we know that we've shot this side. And when we're ready to go, we check on our model and we trigger the shutter. One, two, three. Once the picture is taken, dark slide goes back in. Back comes out. And then we take our film into the dark room for processing. So here we are in the dark room. And We've got our film holder here. We're gonna take our film out. Here we go for one minute into developer. Yeah, we just put that right in. And give it a little bit of rocking agitation. And we quickly see our image coming up. Notice that it's a negative image. One thing I forgot to mention before is that unlike photographic film that's often rated ISO 100 or faster, uh, most photographic uh, black and white paper is rated somewhere between ISO 2 and ISO 4. So this actually took quite a lot of light uh, to properly expose. Now that we have this image, We'll transfer that, let it drip, transfer it to stop bath, and then we'll head into fixer, and then we'll take a look at it out in the light.